Let's do it. Ooh, the Arc de Triomphe. I recognize that. I think it's the Arc de Triomphe. Oh, the Palais de Louvre. Oh yeah, this Louvre. I forgot the Louvre looks like that. All Paris buildings look the same to me. A murder at the Louvre? Let us be reasonable, seniors. I'm sure this is a simple misunderstanding. A wolf? There is no misunderstanding! In the name of the king, arrest that Spaniard! Uh, He killed someone holding a rose. A fox among wolves. I knew Falcon wouldn't feel like turning up to the office on Friday. Do we have... Yeah, we still have a... So I think this is all the characters in the game. But now it's midday on Monday and there's still no sign of him. Looking a little concerning. Yeah, we should go look for him. I should probably go find him. His home would be a good place to start, but the bird brain never gave me his address. I'll have to find him the hard way. Ooh. Huh. I can go to the chateau. Uh, let's go to the prison first. Excuse me, monsieur. I'm looking for my friend. Do I look like I lost and found here? Buzz off, bird brain. All right then. Um. At the, the moment, let's go to the Baron's place. Let's give me Mademoiselle Duhart. Ah. Uh, down here. Oh, there you are. It's Sparrison, right? I heard about the case you were involved in. I never would have thought the Baron was a murderer. He always treated me with the upper. <laughs> but now I suppose it makes sense the most ruthless killers are the ones who can put the best facade. Yeah, I suppose so. So how's your friend doing? He seemed a little down last night. Oh, you've seen him? Yes, he was brooding in the corner of Le Canard Joyeux, mumbling and drinking. It was a little depressing, to be perfectly honest. I can I join you? That's the dingy student bar on Rougeon, right? It's not dingy, it's just a little rustic. In any case, it's enormous health. Thanks, mademoiselle. You need to pick me up? Come to Madame Quanell's student tavern. Let's go to the Palais de Justice anyway. Ah, it's Rabbington. No sign of fucking here. Excuse me, Rupert. Oh, it's you, the uh, first year dropout. I didn't drop out. I was forcibly ejected. That doesn't matter right now. I'm looking for Falcon. Have you seen him? Falcon? The guy who uh, somehow blundered his way for the Catalan trial with the help of some uh, very dubious evidence? No, I haven't seen this in the um, trial. Huh. Well, thanks anyway. Let's go back to the office and see if we get actually done off. Yep. Still no sign of him. Okay, to the bar where he's probably drowning his sorrows. That's an exception to the doors of Le Canard Joyeux, the dingy student tavern. Or he's not filled with the pungent aroma of sour wine and bitter tobacco. Well, ruffle my feathers if this isn't little Sparrowson. I haven't seen you since you yet. I haven't seen you since you. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Han? I'm feeling pretty good, man, Quinnell. Thanks for asking. Imagine here my friend, he's a big guy named JJ Falcon. Falcon? Yep, that sorry lump has been here all weekend. He's been moaning and muttering to himself all weekend. Frankly, he's bringing the whole atmosphere down. I'll take care of him. It's no problem, hon. He's probably still in the corner of the drinking room upstairs. Ew. It's a card room as well. Let's go to the card room. Hmm? It's a British from Jack Noir, are you, monsieur? No, no, I'm looking for my friend. The big drunk fellow. I think I spied him downstairs. Oh. Okay, Falcon. Let's get you out of the drink. Hmm. No sign of him. What? You almost stepped on the big fellow. Uh, Falcon? 
what are you doing on the floor? In fact, wake up! Wow, the bed's completely out cold. Must have drunk this place dry. Let's see, how do you wake a drunk person? Pour a drink on his head? Let's yell at him first. Good morning, Falcon! Nope, nothing. Drink on his head. Well, I guess it's time for a rude awakening. Wakey, wakey! They <laughs> reuse that fountain spray. Ah, <laughs> oh, good drop. He looks a bit bloodshot as well. Uh, are you with us, Falcon? Yeah. Feeling sober? If I head back to the area office, we could get some work done. I don't understand this person. Huh? I thought I did everything right. I followed all the procedures. I found all the evidence. I presented the case beautifully. And yet, a guilty feline walks free while an innocent man sits in custody. What went wrong? Where's the justice? I don't really have an answer to that. <laughs> I don't know, Falcon. Sometimes the system just doesn't work, I guess. It should work. Yeah, it probably should. Sorry, Falcon, I don't have the answers. But what I do have is freshly baked croissants from Pierre's Boulangerie. Croissants. Yep, they're waiting for you back at the aviary. I'm sitting here moping about justice, and you offer me croissants. Well, it's not just croissants, I got some pain au chocolat, too. <laughs> I could go for pain au chocolat. <laughs> Fantastic, then. Let's make a move. Alright. I admit it. These croissants are amazing. I told you. Pierre's Boulangerie and Rue Verde is something else. Oh, that reminds me. Make it me something interesting. Do you know they're called Pano Chocolat in America? They don't call them Pano Chocolat. Nope. Pronunciation difficulties. American is a whole other language. So what do they call them? Chocolate croissants. Um, uh... It's a... Mouse. Hello? <laughs> Chocolate croissants. What do they call profiteroles? Oh, I think those are still profiteroles. Rather than custard, they fill them with ice cream and smother them in melted chocolate. Simply outstanding. Is this the aviary attorney? Can I speak to someone, please? Well, what do they call crepes? Excuse me! Did you just hear something, Sparrowson? Down here! Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. What can I do for you, little one? Well, that occurs to me now I can actually see their legs. Yeah, they've got human legs. Well, either that, or they've got bird feet and they just put them in shoes. Oh, gosh, where to start? Your name, perhaps? Mousy, my name is Mousy. What can we do for you, Monsieur Mousy? I have this friend, and he's fallen under some legal turbulence. Legal turbulence? You mean he's been arrested? Oh uh, yes, I suppose so. They're saying he's a murderer, but he didn't do it. He didn't do it. That's quite a problem. I know, uh, but I forgot to mention, he's the Prince of Spain. The Prince of Spain? And you didn't think that was worth mentioning from the start? I forgot, I forgot. I must ask, Mess, why did you come to us? I would have thought the Spanish royal family would hire legal counsel with a little more. not terribleness? Expertise. Uh, the prince has great faith in your lawyering skills, Monsieur Falcon. He said your reputation as a lawyer was renowned. Really? The prince said that? It's a great opportunity, Falcon. Surely you wouldn't deny a request from the Prince of Spain? Of course not. Of course we'll take the case. Grab your coat, Sparrows, and we have royal teeth to defend. That's the spirit. Good luck to you, messieurs. You aren't coming with us. Mm -hmm. I have um, I have other matters to attend to. But Prince Juan is being held in the conciergerie. I'm sure he'll fill more details. Alright, let's make a move then. Let's get the extra dialogue. Stop messing around, Falcon. Let's help our Prince Juan already. 
to the conciergerie. Good day, monsieur. Oh, it's you two again. Hey, nice work on Lady Kin's trial. Van Rogueel's pacing around cell right now, ranting about wringing your neck. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. He's super mad, eh? A criminal's a criminal, right? It lined in what death sentence. He probably shouldn't have killed the guy. Oh. He's got a death sentence? Oh, that, that, that cheers me up. That cheers me up. I got an innocent man sentenced to death. Hmm. Oh, you're not here to defend him, are you? Because that would be hilarious. But actually, he's seen Prince Juan Corrido, heir to the throne of Spain. The mouthy fuck, sir. That guy's driving me nuts to be seniors in his flamboyant attitude. I said, the sooner he hangs the bear. Oh, come on then, while we're young. What? 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 Is this the time in France when every murder got the death penalty? Who he has a book? The Prince of Spain, I presume. Oh my God! Indeed, I won Corrido, heir to the throne of España, and you must be the legendary lawyer, lawyer, Senor J. J. Falcon. Well, I wouldn't say legendary. I would even say notable. Such humility. I would depend nothing less from renowned individuals such as yourselves. Let's get down to business. I trust that my companion Ero Malsi explained the situation. He told us you've been accused of murder, but we need some further details. Mm -mm. Ah, of course. What is it you wanted to know? Murder first. First of all, I'm a little confused how a member of royalty could get into so much trouble. Could you walk us through your activities on the other murder? Of course. Let me see. Where to begin? It was a cold and misty morning, the 6th of St. January. I heard that King Louis Philippe was unveiling a new painting at the Palais de Louvre, and I wished to meet the man himself. But the we strolled bit in Tullier's garden, I entered the palace. I found the little entourage in the Louvre's grand gallery, where I saw an opportunity and a humble gift to the king. A rose, an international symbol of passion and virtue. How romantic. But before the king could take it, a rather rude person snatched it from my fingers. It was a royal guard, a dog by the name of Major Howe. Ouch! cried out Major Howe. I have pricked myself upon the thorns of this dastardly flower. And then the Major slumped to the floor. His face turned blue, his mouth frothed, and he died. So he's our victim. He died straight away after being pricked. Straight away, Signor. It's obvious the pricked figure was the cause of death. I don't have any point in that act so far. Nor do I, Signor Falcon. But clearly, the police felt poison upon the Rose's thorns with the only logical explanation. I have so many witnesses, even the king himself, what could I say to defend myself? So where did this rose come from? I acquired it from a beautiful Parisian flower seller, Les Hall Markets, a girl by the name of Catherine Marie Singh. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna pronounce it, I'm gonna pronounce it Singh. But surely you're not suggesting the flower girl applied the poison herself, Signor Falcon? Well, I'm not making any accusations yet, yeah. I'm just trying to explore every line of inquiry. Poison Rose. Do you want to have something else, Signor Falcon? Uh, why were you in Paris? Well, he already said, really, to meet with the king. I was on a diplomatic mission. I do not know if you're familiar with the current event. Even though my country is in a state of turmoil, contenders for the Spanish throne are slandering, plotting, backstabbing. It's chaos, and the people are suffering. So I thought, if I can befriend some French royalty, perhaps even the king might himself, maybe I can strengthen my family name. When the Corrido dynasty restored, I would have a chance to bring in peace to my beautiful nation. Well, I guess that plan's gone out the window. Sparrow, son, don't be rude. No, he's right. I failed terribly. No threat, Prince Juan. I'll do everything I can to clear your name. If it wants to dust itself, you have nothing to do with the king Louis Philippe. Thank you, Signor Falcon. I'm sure you'll do your best. Uh, what are you reading? I don't read before we said reading interrupted. Ah, this book! It's a Spanish classic! Don Quixote of La Mancha! Do you know it? Ooh, he's reading Don Quixote. I read it. I read it. Strange story. I don't know why I'm supposed to be laughing or crying over the hero's misadventures. Indeed. It's easy to read the book as a comedy, but when I look around, I can't help see all the people who think themselves as knights. I have no idea what you two are prattling on about. Not a book lover, Senor Sparrowson? Ah, dabble. It's just most of my reading material tends to be on the light side. Nice and pulpy. I see. Well, how about this, Senor Sparrowson? I will lend you this book. Maybe you'll have a chance to read it, and then you'll be able to join in our conversation. 
Thank you. I'll keep it in my bathroom. For toilet breathing material, of course. El, ingen El ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Man. <laughs> Is that actual full title? On close examination, page 44 is missing. That's strange. Also, I might as well look at profiles. Oh no. Lovely landlady manager looking after it. Let's see. One greeter. Mid how? And of course, he's a dog. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanted to know? No, oh, I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. What's the plan, Big Bird? Well, we have two lines of inquiry. We intend to see the crime, the Palais de Louvre, and see if we can find any clues or witnesses. And you need to be the flower going this whole market to see if you're thinking of the alleged poison rose. Two tasks were over six days. This sounds so sounds easy. Let's not get complacent. Good luck, senors. Wait a minute, Falcon. Did something seem off about Prince One to you? Off? Well, he's a fox. They have those teeth. He's quite a character. He seems colourful to me. Throwing roses, spying about literature. Once one suave Spaniard. Hmm. Maybe I misread him. It's bothering you. We could always ask around. Maybe someone in the scene knows one of the dirty secret. If she has his name in the there. Let's take out the dirt. We still got a trial to prepare for. Priority, Sparrison. Okay, so we've got six days until the trial. Um, we're gonna lose this house, or we can go back down to La Canard. I bet that's where we'll get the gossip. First, let's revisit the places. What do you want? I'm judging from. I know, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he says the same thing he's saying, Chase. Is this going to be repeated as well? Yep. What about if we go to the Palais de Justice? Too early, aren't we? Just scoping the place out. Come on, fuck, what are we going investigating to do? Uh, crime scene first. I say always go to the crime scene first. Fuck about the window way to the Palais de Carousel, the courtyard just north of the Louvre's Grand Gallery. That's the Arc de Triomphe over there, right? I swear it's small than how I remember. I knew it was the Arc de Triomphe. That's the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, you doofus. The big Arc de Triomphe is at the road. Well, I was half right. No way, why are they two? Because when a man like Napoleon invades half of Europe, he gets to build as many triumphal arches as he damn well pleases. <laughs> well, well, well. I never expected to see you here, JJ. That arrogant voice. Ah, good day, Severin. Coca Rica. Let's be civil, JJ. I'm going to do it with your new assistant. Fine, fine. Severin, this is Sparrison, my assistant. Sparrison, this is Severin Coca Rica, the most pompous prosecutor in Paris. Oh, God, he's going to be our prosecutor for the rest of the game, isn't he? <sighs> Rabbitson got his moment. Oh, are you two old school friends or something? More like arch rivals. Please, JJ, I think arch rival implies some sort of competition. As I recall, we've been on five occasions. On five occasions, did you get humiliated terribly? I'm amazed a failing bird brain like you is still able to get clients. Actually, Severin, business has never been banned. I've you know, I'm currently being employed by the Prince of Spain, no less. The Prince of Spain? Juan Corrido? Well, this is quite an amusing coincidence. Don't tell me. Correct. I am the prosecutor for the very same. It is a pity the Spanish prince would dutifully hang, but I suppose that is what he gets for hiring a bird brain to represent him. Don't call me bird brain. You don't have any bird brain here, Severin. One always speaks badly when one has nothing to say, Voltaire. 
Uh oh, he's giving you the verbal smackdown. Well, if I can make a wee retort. Um. No, that's a crap saying. A witty saying proves nothing, Voltaire. Ooh! Ha! <laughs> Very good, JJ. However, you're a pass. Let's not talk. If you misuse this, excuse me, I have a case to. <laughs> JJ. Sparrowson. I'll see you two in court. Ah, I can't stand that guy. He's a bit of cockerel. <laughs> That's what he said. They chanced you in court five times. I can't deny it. Severing his reputation as a ruthlessly thorough prosecutor. Mountains of evidence. Surprise witnesses. Some wonder who always manages to one up me. This will be different, right? I hope so. No, sir, for you see, I stole this anointed nanotechnic map of the loom out of Kokoriko's pocket while he was busy rattling off Altair quotes. Sparrowson, that's. 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 pretty impressive. <laughs> pretty impressive, actually. I saw you were standing three meters away the whole time. You tall birds are so busy with your head in the clouds, you don't even notice a small folk running around your feet. You Kokoriko's pocket is like they can candy for a very tall baby. Let's take a closer look. I see. This map shows the entire Louvre area. Everything from to the areas of the Rue de Louvre. Which is convenient. I can't stand here, the Place de Carousel. And those pendant arrows seem to show the route taken by the King's entourage. Which means the King first went here through the Salle de Tibre. Then here into the Grand Gallery where the murder occurred. Did Prince Juan say he was in the morning in the Tuileries Gardens? That's right. So Miss Prince Juan about to Louvre from the west side, somewhere over here. So another place to visit. Where should we go first? Um, let's retrace Prince Juan's steps first. So the garden. Oh look, it's Monsieur Robinho. <laughs> Our feather headed friends wandered through the evacuator. Have you said the origin as well? Familiar face picking up litter by a tree though. Hey, look at does that groundskeeper over there look familiar? Yeah. Now that I'm looking at him, he does look like a photographer. What's his name? Jeff. Rabitio Rubinio. Hmm? Someone call me? Uh, oh, it's you. The lawyers who don't appreciate a masterful photographer, they see it. Because you go on your artsy dreams because of the more grounded career of groundskeeping. I'm not doing this willingly. I was doing community service for creating perjury. Could you believe that? They gave me, an esteemed photographer, community service. Me! Yeah, I can believe that. Perjury is somewhat serious. You should be thankful you got off without jail time. <sighs> you sound just like that self righteous Judge Maxine. D did you talk to ask me several you just said to go? Personally, I'm just gulping. Actually, I do have a couple of questions, if you don't mind, but you're being here. Have you met Prince? Have you met? I thought you were wondering a Spanish fox who got on the Prince Warren, have you? A Spanish fox? No, I've never met anyone like that. And it's about that assassination in terms of the king. You're asking the wrong person. I only started working yesterday. I see. Is there anything else you wanted? How's the cricket? How's a new groundskeeper job working out? Terrible. Two, it's a pig. Sometimes literally. Look at this rubbish I found. Beer bowls, tin cans, apple cores. Look, I picked up this by the West Entrance. A book page. Oh, book I can have a single page. What kind of delivery more? There's just one page. Is that page 54? 44? Wait a moment. I think this is there, I'm sure. Don Quixote. That's a page from Don Quixote. Can I take it off your hands, I'm sure? Sure. What's it worth to you? What's it worth is trash. It's literally worthless. And I suppose I'll be destroying it as per my duty. Alright, alright. I'll do a little competition with How about you give me the page and I'll. I'll get your photos in the Louvre! I'll get your photographs put up in the Louvre. Framed in the Grand Gallery, front and center. Wow, you have the power to do that? Absolutely, monsieur. We're lawyers. We can do all kinds of crazy things. Now it's a deal! Here, take the page. Well, we've got page 44. Psst, how can. How are you going to fill your part of the deal? I don't have a clue. I'll cross that bridge later. Once this case is over, I mean. Find something else. Nope, that's all. You can get back to your gardening. It's a plastic carousel. Let's look around there, actually. No. Uh, 
So they went. So let's retrace the king's route now. So Saldati probably went first. So this is a Saldati bro. If I understand Kukuriko's notes correctly, this is the room the king's entourage stopped him behind in the grand gallery. Let's set you this through. A successful and pompous pompous pompous. A love of philosophy and a hobby if you mean anything. This room doesn't seem to be very popular. This seem to be around to interrogate. Interview. Right. Interview. So this is quiet. Maybe we take the opportunity to do a little snooping. What would be the point? Surely all the interesting evidence would be in the Grand Gallery would have been. Pick about that. And the police have already gone around to the Grand Gallery. We'll find two cones. But I bet that numbskull inspector Valetti didn't even think to check this room for clues. Oh, you're a murder weapon just under our beat. Your know, logic seems a little questionable, but couldn't have to have a look, I suppose. Okay, what is there to examine in here? Very dark in here. Um, the pillar. One, two, three, four, five. I count. These can't have been designed to look Roman. I think the star was ionic. It's ionic falcon. Irony is when the character says something, but the reader knows it means something completely different. That's not. Never mind. <laughs> um, left. A spine calm. Holding the roof up. The comet would truly support him. We wouldn't hold the roof up, but we'd encourage the roof to get to its location on time. <sighs> Let's go left to right. Shiny copper urn. Guess we used to carry more of the cremated remains. Probably not both at the same time. That was good. Don't sniff the exhibit, Sparrison. Wait, this earth was amazing. It was so much chocolatey. You poor thing, hallucinating from hunger. I stopped by a bakery on the way back to the office. Don't patronize me, Falcon. My nose never lies. I tell you, there's something in here. I can feel it. Now you're touching the exhibit. That's definitely a no-no. See? Look what I found in the urn. It's chocolate. Put that down, Sparrow. So someone's all rubbish. Look at the chocolate wrapper. Judging by the smell, the chocolate is bitter and dark. 70 pounds, 80 percent cocoa. Belgian in origin. The level of wrapper crumbling in the purpose of the chocolate bridge you indicated this card just a few days ago. Yes, I'm certain. Doctor contains around on Daddy Good Shooter the seventh of January, the day of the murder. Come on, juice Sparrowson, you didn't use all that from smelling the wrapper. Imagine what I could work out if I tasted it. That won't be necessary. Sparrowson, if you can apply the critical thing areas outside of food, you'll be the world's greatest detective. Only all evidence were edible. So do you have anything which shot the chocolate purchase room? No, I'm tracking on the person who consumed it. There's no possible way you could know that. I suppose we just visit every confection in the town, sample every bit of measure that requires him. What a chore! Interesting, because I can see Lander Hagelslack's chocolate emporium written on the wrapper. I can't play both for trying. So we're gonna go to the choc so we're gonna go to him then? Maybe. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm not sure what this is. It's not a stand or podium. It was just a decorative piece. Roman door stop. Roman doors are enormous marble slabs, so the door starts have to be similar to on the same place. I don't think that's right. Look at the Roman historian. Trust me. I see a cabinet full of engraved plates, mostly bronze. I don't think they're worth. I don't know. 300 francs a piece at least. What? Are you serious? I'm in the wrong profession. I don't think archaeology works as a get rich quick scheme, Sparrowson. Say we archaeology. I'm gonna become a museum robber. Oh, well that's one way to get rich quick. And finally the big thing. This is a sort of ceremonial container. It's beautifully crafted, but what does it contain? Maybe it's an arcane wine cabinet. Don't be so ignorant, Falcon. This is a sacred Mesopotamian artifact gifted to Emperor Hadrian for his victory at Euphrates in 123 AD. Stop making stuff up. You and I both know nothing about Mesopotamia. Oh, right, right, you got me. This could be a hippo's chain box for all I know. Don't think there's anything else in here. We're done here. Uh -uh. Can't I take it Where do next? Okay, to the crime scene now. Oh, there's porcupine here. <laughs> the Grand Gallery. The murder room. 
I need to murder a crow right under the new painting. I see hundreds of paintings. Which one is the new one? I haven't the foggiest. We've got to ask. Please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me. Excuse me, Richard. You look like you know your Mona Lisa from your last suppers. I don't want any attention. Maybe he isn't talking to me. No, he's definitely talking to me. Keep it together, Eric. Oh, uh, hi. Would you happen to know which painting was available on the 7th of January? The one the king came to visit. Oh yeah, I can help you with that. It's the piece right behind you. Oh, I see. It's a painting of the king himself. And he's a mallard, looks like. <laughs> That's one noble-looking penguin. 